Good morning, traders. If you watch a lot of my live trade recap videos lately, you see that I generally enter stocks or almost always enter stocks with my hotkeys. And I often exit with my hotkeys or usually a limit order that I place um, once I'm in the trade. But if it hits my stop loss, then I'll use my hotkeys to get out. So let's talk about how I have them set up. I do wanna show you that I do already have hotkey videos and this is uh, an important thing. If you just go to my trading channel, um, and you don't want to scroll through all the videos. I know there's a ton of videos and this is true with just about every trading channel out there. Use the search bar and type in hotkeys and you'll see my hotkey videos, right? If you want to see like how I set up my indicators, type in indicators. There's my indicators. How, how do I make my watch list? There you go. That works on every trading channel that there is. I also have playlist, but that's even easier to just use that search bar. So if you have any questions about anything I do in my videos, I would start there. And then uh, if you can't find an answer, then you know leave me a comment and I'll make a new video. Um, but today I decided to go ahead and make another uh, video about hotkeys because it's been a while. My videos on hotkeys are four months old and I do do things a little differently now. You've noticed if you've been watching my videos that I generally tra trade from the watch list page. And I really do prefer that. I used to trade from the trade page, um, but I like the watch list page better because it's more efficient. I can have uh, many stocks on here at once. I have it set to where I can have four stocks. If you have more than that, then you just get multiple pages. You can also set it for nine different stocks. And the beauty of that is that if I want to get in or out of a trade really quickly on multiple stocks, all I have to do is click inside the box and whatever I hit my uh, hotkeys, they will act on whichever box I clicked in. So for example, you see on CNET here, it's highlighted in blue. So if I hit my hotkeys to buy, I would get filled somewhere in this stock. And then if I click over here in SOS, same thing. So that's what I love about the watch list page. It's very quick to uh, flip between different stocks. And sometimes I'm trading two or three stocks at one time. So it really is the only way to do that. Now, let's talk about how to get the hotkeys up. So you have to go over here to widget settings and scroll down and click on active trade. And there it pops up. Those are the hot buttons, which are linked to the hotkeys. And I don't like to have them up here. Uh, really, I generally have them out of sight, but for now, I'm just gonna show you how to move them down. You see that little four arrow thing that, that uh, pops up there on the bar, then you just click on it and drag it down. You can move it wherever you want. And now, how do you set up the hotkeys? Yours aren't gonna look like this because they're not set up yet. Just click on this little gear icon, which said active trade settings. And I buy the ask, which makes sense because that's where the sellers are. Ask is is the price that sellers are selling the stock at. Bid is the price that the buyers are trying to buy the stock at. I have seen some traders on YouTube trying to buy the bid. And I guess I get the idea behind that. You're trying to get in at a cheaper price. But what you're essentially doing when you buy the bid is you're not buying the bid you're buying the ask when the price gets down to the bid price. So right now the ask is 443, the bid is 440. If I hit buy bid, I'm not gonna get filled. It ha the ask has to come down to that price. Uh, if you have your offset set, then it will get filled if it's if the offset is enough, but you know, you're kind of just kidding yourself. You're not buying the bid. You can't buy from other traders that are trying to buy the stock. That doesn't make any sense. They don't own any of the stock, only the, sellers on the ask side own the stock and those are the only people that you can buy from so that doesn't make any sense to me so just use buy the ask now buying the ask is a limit order which is what you want because uh first of all you can only trade with limit orders during extended hours but even during the trade day you should only use limit orders market orders are extremely dangerous especially with volatile stocks like uh, lower float stocks or high volume traded stocks can be so uh, limit order and then quantity, that's up to you. I generally, uh, no, I always use 10% uh, of my account, at least for the past few months, 10% uh, of my buying power on every single trade. And that's just a way to manage my risk. And no matter what um, trade that I get into, I know that I'm using basically the same amount of money on that trade. So if it wins, if it, if it fails or it, it uh, is successful, it's not gonna make or break the account one way or the other. 
So uh, that's what I like to do there. And with the limit offset, this is important. You want at least two cents. I think that's a good uh, criteria for the limit offset because that is a reflection of the spread. Uh, well, basically what it is is the difference between the bid and the ask is the spread, right? So that gives you an idea of how quickly the price can move. So if the ask is 438, well, it was 438 and the, the spread is two or three cents, that means that in an instant that it could go from 438 to 440 or 441. So you want this offset so that if you try to buy the stock and the price moves while your order is being executed, there's a little bit of wiggle room that you can still get filled. If you have that set to one cent or zero, then chances are you're going to have a lot of uh, your your orders coming up with a failure of execution, which I, that actually happened to me this morning. That almost never happens to me because of this limit offset, but it happened this morning on the SOS, and I assume that's why it probably jumped past my offset. But I would say that that happens to me maybe one out of 50 trades. So this two cent offset will, will uh, keep that from happening. And then time and force, I like to have it set to good till canceled. It doesn't really matter uh, because we're day traders, so we're only trading for the length of the day. But um, there might have been an issue in the pre-market with having it set to day since technically extended hours is not you know, the, the intraday. So that might be why. So if you have any issues with trading in the extended hours and it's set to day, set it to good till canceled. You definitely need extended hours selected to yes for uh, trading in the extended hours. Uh -huh. And then the hotkeys, this is probably going to be blank unless you've already programmed your hotkeys. Now, this will be a personal thing. Um, let's just de delete that for now. So this might be what, what you're looking at. You've got your buy ask set up and now you want to set your hotkeys. You need two keys to uh, trigger. You can't just like click. Let's see if I click A. See, it says must be a combination of control shift or all alt with a letter or a number. So I like just because of the logistics of the keyboard and I like to trigger my hotkeys with my left hand, I like to hit control Z for my buy uh, button, buy ask. And so that's done. Now we're gonna do, so the 100 thing, let me just show you that really quick. The 100 thing, that is if you're trading with uh, like a penny stock where on Weeble you have to buy at least 100 shares and I have that set exactly the same way as the previous one, so we don't really have to spend much time on that. The only difference is uh, the hotkey, that one's set to control B, which is a little bit cumbersome, but I want it to be because I don't want to accidentally trigger off, you know, buying 100 shares on, on a higher price stock. That would really be bad. So I want, I want it to take a little bit of effort to get to the, those keys. And it's something I rarely use. I almost never trade stocks that are below a dollar. Right now, I don't do it at all. So that's kind of just there from uh, previous trading setups. And then the sell, this is really important. This is not how I get out when my uh, profit target is hit. This is my uh, sell button if my stop loss gets hit because you cannot use hard stops during the pre-market uh, or, or, or after market, you have to manually stop out of your trades. Uh, and you should have a way to manually stop out of your trades anyway, even if you're only trading intraday, because what happens if, uh, you know, as soon as you enter the stock, it, it, it hits your stop loss, which that can happen. So you want to be able to get out very quickly. This is set up the exact same way. The only, th the main difference here is you want it set to a hundred percent because you want to get out completely. Um, then I have the the limit price set to bid instead of the ask because when you sell, you're gonna be selling to buyer. So the same argument that I gave on the ask is just kind of in reverse. And the limit offset is set, set a little wider here, five cents, because if you've noticed that a lot of times when your stop loss price gets hit, the stock could sell off very, very quickly and you don't wanna get stuck holding the stock as it continues to drop. You wanna get out even if you have to take five cents slippage you still want to get out now that has proven so far that that uh i i've never been denied execution of my order with a five cent offset and i uh, rarely do do where rarely does uh, my order use that whole five cent spread so i almost never get that much slippage but once in a while it does happen but that's better than being stuck holding the stock as it continues to go lower and you're still struggling to get out so you want that there, uh, I would say at least five cents. 
And then again, the hotkey is gonna be your preference. I like to use Alt A and uh, the A is very near to Z and then the Alt is a different button from Control. So, you know, it feels uh, tactily like, okay, now I'm going from my buy to my sell and that kind of thing. So that's really it. Um, I think, let's see, auto send. So someone was asking about order confirmation. So if you click auto send, that should get rid of, you can do it right here as well. That should get rid of those order confirmations so that as soon as you hit your hotkeys, it doesn't ask, are you sure you wanna place this order? It just does it. Um, cancel all, I don't really use that. I just have it selected. I guess that's if, if an order is out but not filled, I can cancel it you know, with that control X key. But again, I never use that. Um, same thing with close, close positions with a limit order. I don't know. These, I guess I thought I might use these, but, um, but yeah, it doesn't really, those don't really get used. Just the uh, buy and sell buttons that I showed you earlier. So that should do it. I don't think I left anything out. Um, let me just show you on the trade page. The only difference is when you pull up that widget. So widget settings, stock, it's going to look like this now, active trade. You want to make sure that you you link it to your group, right? I already have this one here linked to my group, which is group one, and that way, when you switch to different stocks on the um, stop on the sorry on your watch list, the um, hot keys and buy buttons switch as well. But I have the otherwise I have these set up the same way. Oh, one other thing that's really important is the other setting that you might need to mess with. Uh, let's see, it should be the same thing, but just want to make sure. Um, oh no, it must be on trade. Oh, here we go. So order preference, show order confirmation. So make sure that's unselected because that may also uh, ask you, are you sure you want to you want to take this trade? Um, yeah, so this is exactly how I have everything set up. Remind when short selling, that's a good thing to have up because what if you accidentally hit your sell button, your sell hotkey when you meant to buy, you don't want to uh, accidentally enter a short position on the stock. So make sure you have that selected. So I think that's it. That's how I use my hotkeys these days. If you watch my live trade recaps, you can see all of that in action. And one last thing I do want to say is once I'm in the trade, if the trade is going in my favor, I do not use my hotkeys to get out. I use a sell limit order. Uh, like here, let, you know, my profit target was 531. So I would do 100%. I would set it to limit and I would do 531 place order. And then I'll have a limit order there. Now that it, you really do want to do that as opposed to trying to get out with the hotkeys. Because oftentimes what happens is your your profit target price will get hit. And as soon as it gets hit, it bounces off that level. Um, so if you trigger the sell with your hotkeys, you're going to get slippage. Instead of getting filled at 531, you might get filled at 525 or something like that. So the best way to get out is with a limit order that you have in place already and if you again watch my live trade recap videos you'll see exactly how all that works so let me know if you have any questions about this hotkey video or any other thing that i do with my trading but again remember to use that search bar and oftentimes you'll find a video that answers your your question immediately and just a reminder too i also have a facebook trading group small group um you know i'm not trying to be the next furu or guru or anything like that i really use this page as a way to share my files like my trading plan my spreadsheet my 2r calculator that kind of thing so if you want access to that stuff everything's totally free you just have to become a member of the trading group and you can download any of that stuff you want um, but the group is also very useful. It's very, I would say, mature people, <laughs> which is nice because social media, you know, is is often uh, that's not the case all the time. And um, they're they're sharing very pertinent information and and asking very good questions. Uh, and, and it's mostly geared toward Weeble users, but of course, any trader could benefit, I think, from the information uh, that is on this Facebook trading page. And I I always share other people's um, videos that I find, you know, would be helpful to other traders. So 
Anyway, again, let me know if this was helpful to you. If it was, hit the like button. If you want to see more live trading videos, uh, subscribe. And let me know if you have any questions. I always like to leave you guys with, if you um, always honor your profit target, always take your stop loss no matter what. You should be green in the long run. Take care.